like no one can. Where is your heart? What does it look like? Rooms damaged or mistreated. Alrighty, how is everyone doing? Wonderful. Great, how are you? Doing well. oh, wonderful. Um, so just a quick around the board here. I got, um, just have everyone introduce themselves if you don't mind. Um, we'll start off with uh, Chris Christina. Sure, um, I'm Christina Flowers and I'm pretty new um, as a board member to um, Enlightened Studios and I'm so pumped about it, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Well, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Terry. Terry. Oh. Terry. Terry. I'm Terry Chapel II. Um, I'm actually the co-owner of Enlightened Studios, the writer and now actor and director in uh, the production, upcoming production, Love's Not Enough. My name is Nikhil Chapel. I am co-owner of Enlightened Studios, and I am the executive producer as well of Love's Not Enough. Well, I want to first off and thank you guys for taking the time. I know the schedule was kind of, uh, um, we've had to rearrange the schedule uh, for, you know, to make all this work, and I appreciate it. Um, but so you, this is the upcoming play, Love's Not Enough. We, we had a set of interviews back in January, and that was a hit. Enjoyed doing it. We're going to be doing them again, and you guys are getting a chance to kind of do an art encore weekend, correct? Uh, April 7th and April 8th, um, Easter weekend, where you guys, before you guys, I guess, hit on the road, try to share, share the message out to everybody, you guys can, uh, you know, perform because you guys had a really good hit. Terry, can you explain to us, I mean, about the type of success that that you guys had back in January? Well, I, I'll just say that first, thank you for having us um, this evening, Justin. This is this is incredible. We had we really did enjoy ourselves last time. And thank you for having us back for a second time. Um, I I was speechless. Um, and and. <laughs> to actually say to a point where uh, Christina, that's how she got on board because she was just, you know, raving about how good the production was. And, you know, she just caught my attention because she had so much to say about it. And, you know, I was just, you know, just, I don't want to say starstruck, but I was because it was, it was just the way that the, audience received the the many messages that's within this production just blew the cast everyone mm -hmm. that was involved just blew their mind we knew that it was going to be good yeah. but how good i mean it, it was it was off the chart so, so one we, of the stories i was told was that you guys had a line of an audience fans ready to enter in the, you know, the theater before you guys even open, as you guys were arriving, there was already people lined up. And, um, that's what I was, that's what I was told. And if, correct me if I was wrong, but it was so successful. You guys are getting a chance to go back and do it again. Two performances only got one at 7 PM on April 7th. And then on April 8th, you got one at 3 PM. Um, T Terry, you know, you've had a couple of cracks at this, right? You had one, done in 2019 uh, a revamped version that we had back in 2000 uh, earlier this year uh -huh. and now you're doing it again were you what have what is what has gone through your mind through your experience getting a chance to uh see the put on this play as a you know director and an actor right and to see the type of reaction that you're getting from the community well um it just it just motivates me to do more you know god's people want what's real people want what's real you know this is not a mary pops poppins or wizard yeah. of oz or 
anything just made up. This is these stories are real stories. Um, I'll say 20% of the production is actually um, true stories to, from from what I have taken from uh, some of the cast members' lives. Everything else is pretty much just downloaded into me to write and you know get, just give people hope. So, so there you're 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 the one who who's created this play. Uh, you're cast of this play. You're also part of the play. Uh, we have um, two new. Uh, people here joining us today this evening that has not been interviewed before uh you mm -hmm. uh we'll start you off, uh start off with christina uh you're you're new to the the cast right um yes. when did you did you officially start kind of after the january performance is that correct that is correct i was actually an audience member so i got to experience um like being um the audience of the the show it was amazing i was like imp super impressed and honestly, it was literally like a journey that you got to go through with the cast. So you got to experience all these emotions. And it was so, it really hit home. It was like really, it was like reality. <laughs> so they were, it was super re relatable. And it also, mm -hmm. like you said, gave hope and um, increased your faith almost. It's like I almost left feeling like my, my heart was full. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to reach out to Terry and say, hey, incredible, like amazed. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So. I kind of already know this answer, but I guess for audio's purposes, and I'm not trying to put Enlightened Studios on blast or anything like that, but you, you, you come in, you get welcomed by Enlightened Studios. They're a wonderful team. It's more than just a team. It's a family. Can yeah. you share your experience being able to work, adapt, get caught up with everything, you know, so that you're ready for whatever, you know, for your role for April 7th and April 8th? Yeah, so I'm actually um, executive assistant and board liaison. So I'll be um, um, assisting with the production. Um, and also like my experience comes in like finance and also um, other administrative and clerical experience. So I've also had some acting and some singing experience. So I'll be bringing literally everything that I have to like Enlighten Studios. <laughs> so I'll yeah. just be bringing all that experience in. And they've been super welcoming, super friendly. Um, I, I noticed quickly that um, Terry will have a vision and he'll execute. So I'm actually mm -hmm. really proud and really honored to be a part of such a great team. Everyone's encouraging. Um, everyone's kind. They um, yeah. have the spirit of excellence and I love it. You know, one thing I've also learned and I'll give you, you know, I, I can't, I got to tip my hat to you, you know, Terry and, and also, and everyone a part of Enlightened Studios because it's not just about, you know, building is about making sure that ever everyone else gets an opportunity to grow and branch off into their own. Right. You know, I was talking to uh, one of your cast members earlier this week and there, you know, she's thriving herself thanks to the success and the platform that, you know, Enlightened Studios has created. Um, and she, you know, she's working on, you know, becoming, you know, taking her own path also. Um, so we're also welcoming is it Nikkel, right? That, um, just yes. want to make sure I'm saying that right. Um, you're new all to this. Um, this is the first time we're seeing you. Um, so if you don't mind, just a little bit more information about yourself and the role that you play uh, and part of all of this. Yes. Yeah, so um, again, my name is Nikkel Chapel. I am the wife of Terry Lee Chapel. Um, so actually, he and I started this um, coming back in 2018. So I'm not really new. I'm just hidden. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I handle, I'm the CFO. So I handle all the financing and getting, okay. getting us money so we can keep growing um, as well as the executive producer. So I'm kind of calling the shots behind the scenes. I enjoy yeah. working with the cast and working with the crew. And like you said, they're very much like family. So mm -hmm. we welcome, we're a ministry first. We love to say that mm -hmm. we're ministry first and we are a fine arts and theater and film company second. So it's really just to give God the glory, the honor. That's what we're here for. And we want to treat our cast and crew and audience like family when they come and visit us and stay with us. And we bring a lot of volunteers just from yeah. our audience who want to participate and grow with us. So, so as um, Terry, as you grow, you know, enlightened studios, as you grow on the production, you, you saw, you saw such a huge success. 
you know, being in, you also had to step in yourself and play one of the main cast members. So as you're focusing on the production of the play, you're really relying on uh, Nikel and Christina to kind of help you take a load off of you. Um, you know, and that's a unity. Can you kind of share um, your insights of kind of like, um, you know, how, how has everything been able to kind of sync together to make all this uh, possible? Well, I mean, I, I have to give Nikel all the credit. You know, she really rocked it um, backstage. Mm -hmm. um, she was up in the booth. She was controlling the the, the um, running along with the script and controlling the sound, the lighting, the you name it. And she's calling the shots. We have two other uh, stage managers that's yeah. backstage and. You know, they're all communicating. Now, I, I will say that me being, you know, first time acting, you know, I was thrown in there. But all along, it was the setup because we casted Brandon, the, the role Brandon, <clears throat> who actually planned me. Right. Um, we casted that role three times. And what I would do is I would fill in during rehearsals. I would fill in for that role and um so that that role wouldn't be uh missed or so that the, my my scene partner would be able to rehearse and re rehearse properly so it was kind of a, a setup for me to get ready to take on you know that lead role um but it's just it's just been phenomenal the way that that uh Nikhil operated everything i remember there were a few times where I'm backstage waiting for my next scene and here I am trying to right. direct and get ready for my scene. And they're like, no, you be quiet. Nikhil <laughs> said to do this. You need to be quiet. You're acting right now. So I had to learn to back off, let Nikhil run it and, you know, bringing Christina on board, you know, to, you know, assist as yeah. much as possible. We just want to run it and, and, and make it, everything goes smoothly where you know the, the the cast can enjoy themselves and especially the audience so we're talking about love's not enough um april 7th april 8th right two more performances i you know there's kind of hints that uh how how are you guys uh or how are you you know i've been told you guys are adding things maybe changing tweaking a little things here and there What's going to be a little bit different that the audience can look forward to seeing this time around than just the one that we saw about two months ago? Well, you're going to see Brandon more. Okay. I'll say that. We will see Brandon more. We will see Brandon enter, get to interact with some of the other cast members, um, which is actually feedback that we got from uh, the audience. And one thing that I like to do is I like to get <laughs> reviews from not only the cast but also the audience because i want to make it as good as possible being yeah. a director and writer you can't see everything and a lot of times when writing it's like it's almost like looking through through the eye of a scope you only see what you can see so you know opening up to others and, and allowing feedback has been i think is what is what has helped um, this uh, production be so successful. All right, so Nikel, you know you're you're doing a lot of the 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 work behind production. A lot of things that you know a lot of a lot of times you don't get the the attention, not the attention, but the credit for right. And we we like to make sure you get enough credit. So the, coming into this this time around, right? This is you know from. It's two months, right? Two little two after two months from the last time around. Is there things that have that um that you, you get worried about still, or things that you're trying to to work on getting better at, or as a team working behind the scenes trying to get better? You know, is there a different game plan than the first time approaching it? You know, what I'm saying, um, kind of just what is the new um forefront? You know, focus and coming uh this time around. So I would say the 
back in January, I think it was just nerves in general, being nervous about will the show sell, will people really enjoy what we're gifting them. And that was just nervous energy, I believe. And then once we got started, it was so comfortable. So this time around, I I feel as if it's going to be 10 times better because we've already run through it a couple of times and we know the blocking, we know uh, the lighting and the sound effects, everything is already in place. So it's kind of just putting small little finishing touches on what we all have all already created. So um, I wouldn't say there's too much that I'm worried about <laughs> in general. It's really has become comfortable now. And you're just kind of adding the little tweaks here and there to perfect what we've already put together. Christina, you know, this is your first time around this coming up here in April. You're going to, you know, from coming from watching it in the audience, mm -hmm. now being behind the scenes and being a part of making this all possible and creating the magic, you know, out there on the stage. Um, kind of what is going through your mind? Are you are you nervous? Are you uh, do you have, you know, a game plan, you know, set in your head that say, all right, this is how I'm going to be able to contribute, you know, kind of what, what, do you, what's going through your mindset right now, knowing that this is going to be a completely different, you know, experience for you. Yeah. Um, I am super excited. Um, I'm not nervous just yet. <laughs> um, I'm just going to be available and ready for whatever needs to be done. Um, I just, honestly, I just want to be a part of what God is doing and I'm, I can't be more excited than that. I'm just so excited. So, you know, love's not enough. April 7th, April 8th. Um, tickets are still available, but I've been told you have you should be able to get them online because you may not be able to get them at the door because, I mean, I know that it's going to get, you know, going to be packed and hopefully it is packed. Uh, a big weekend. What uh, made you guys decide to that? Hey, Easter weekend was going to be the perfect week time slot for uh, love's not enough again. Well, that was pretty much the executive producer's um decision <laughs> so i'll let her answer that <laughs> so actually it was god's decision the holy spirit mm -hmm. we prayed and there was absolutely no other time we could have yeah. done it if we wanted to because the facility was booked yeah before and after that date the only reason that date was available was because um people they're they're closed the facility right. is actually closed for the east for easter weekend so um, I definitely have to give props to Jason, who is over the, uh, the manage manager over uh, Fairfield Community Arts Center. Yes. He riled the troops and got the volunteers to step in and said, hey, you'll get time and a time and a half if that's something that you are interested in doing. And people enjoyed it so much the first time that they said they would come in on that holiday. And yeah. that's how we were able to get it. I think that's a blessing in design because the moral, you know, focus point of the, the play and the story, it, it's, it's all related, all connected uh, to, to the weekend as well. Um, you know, we talked, I know we talked about uh, in the past about trying to expand, trying to grow, uh, take this on the road. Have you had any luck in the coming up here in the future, you know, having this go on the road and travel a little bit? So that's that's definitely definitely the talk, yeah. Um, and that's something that we will certainly um, go after once we uh, come to the table after the production. Mm -hmm. um, Where we really want to get this message out and get it around um, to got to to people. You know, people need to hear these these stories. Um, we had one. Um, audience member who was looking for me, but I was so afterwards, um, and this was one of the shows uh, in January, she was so touched by uh, the story that she, she broke down crying and wanted to thank me for writing her story. Now, I've never met this woman. However, um, it was very honoring and, and, and it humbled me mm -hmm. that I was able to write someone's story that I, I I never even met. And I'll just tell you a little bit about the story. The story was um, she 
gave up her kid for an, for adoption 30 years ago. So mm -hmm. she carried that burden for 30 years. And because of what she saw in the production, she felt that burden lifted off of her. So it gave her hope and, and, and allowed her to be grateful for giving her kid up for adoption and not going, you know, the other way. You know, I mean, because, you know, after hearing everyone's role, what the story is about and the true message about what you're trying to perceive, you know, it's true to the testament here that almost everybody that watches this play can can relate in some way, shape or form, even if it's that small uh, scene, you know, at the, you know, that only gets like two minutes of its time. They can always relate to, you know, one of the you know, stories that are being told because it's not just about, you know, Brandon and his story. It's everyone right. has a different message and a different right. role they play to, you know, send the message to the audience. Um, right. You know, well, we're looking forward to um, this play coming up April 7th. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about details and uh, what what we should be doing and looking for? Well, I will say one thing is for sure. I encourage to get your tickets ahead of time mm -hmm. if you have to come to the venue um two three hours early just to pick up your tickets uh hey there's an applebee's right down the street you can go have have lunch or dinner and enjoy yourself before the show but i i really 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 encourage everyone to purchase their tickets early because we're starting on time mm -hmm. last time um all three shows, we started late because the line was out the door and everyone wanted to wait last minute to get their tickets. And we didn't want them to miss the show. So right. this time we have to start the show one time because we want, you know, we want to get everyone in and out at a decent time. So tickets are still the same, correct? Um, yeah. 20, is it? Can you, can you go over that again? Okay. It's uh, twenty-five dollars for stadium and thirty dollars for orchestra. Okay, and it's five dollars more at the door, I believe. Or no, we're actually going to leave it the same at the door. Correct. That's good to know. <laughs> um, and then you could get your tickets online at the Fairfield Community Arts Center website. Yes. Correct. Okay, um, and it's going to be held um, two performances. All right, just two performances. Uh, one at seven on April seventh, right, and one at three p.m. on April eighth. Um, and then, what time does the doors open? So we're actually thinking of possibly opening them earlier, earlier because we have vendors interested in also participating. So we okay. want to give our vendors enough time, so maybe an hour to an hour and a half before the show to open the doors. And I know Easter weekend's a big weekend for a lot of people, a lot of families. Um, what's kind of like the duration of the actual play from start to finish, usually an estimate time? Anywhere from two and a half hours. I'll, I'll say this. This production is like watching a movie on right. stage. Would, okay. you, would you agree, um, Christina? Because she yes. was the one, I, I yeah. was asking her so many questions. <laughs> like, She's been coming to our, our rehearsals now, yeah. and she's getting a chance to see the behind the scenes or mm -hmm. how we're getting everything prepared, and she's seeing the changes. And a lot of times, I'm I'm looking for her reaction, and I'm like, ooh, that must be good. So yeah. I've been asking her so many questions about the difference in this, this go, uh, go around for this production versus what we did in, in January, and, and thus far, she's really enjoying the the uh the changes yeah. so you say about you say so you say about two and a half hours maybe three hours depending i mean but hey listen it's a theater play it has a lot of inspiring messages don't put a time frame on it give you guys you know give the audience you know uh, whoever's going to come and watch it enough time hey you know give yourself enough time to actually watch it through and through because you don't want to miss a, a point and, you know it's just you, you know you mentioned that terry brought up a very good question I got to ask both you, Christina and uh, Nikhil. Um, how much of being behind scenes, watching how the actual production, you know, and the actors, you know, those roles on the screen help you contribute to put to the final product that, you know, that comes April 7th and April 8th. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
how, how much of you guys having to watch that helps you, um, you know, contribute to the final product? Um, well, as far as uh, me, it helps me see, like, first of all, seeing the process, I've noticed them growing in confidence, but it also helps me to see where, where they can be helped um, as far as, um, like, I guess areas that they're not as confident in yeah. <laughs> or need help in. So um, I just look for ways that I can help in that way. Um, honestly, other than that, they've been amazing. Like they're awesome on stage, awesome off stage. So it's been really cool to see behind the scenes and all the hard work that they put in. I would say definitely um, making them feel comfortable backstage and giving them, I mean, we actually have uh, massage therapists that come in and give them massages to kind of relax them. They put on their headphones and go into just a zone to get into character, um, practicing, practice, 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 blocking yeah. on stage and off, um, feeding them well. <laughs> They're well taken care of. <laughs> Everyone has to eat. That is the rule. So <laughs> that, we was, have that was one of my biggest, you know, <laughs> interesting things to know. Um, you know, last time around was like in between, you know, you know, in between shows and all the stuff after shows. But um, yeah, listen, it's going to be a fun time. And this is only the 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 bottom what you guys are capable of doing. And I can only I can't wait to see what more has to come. And I hope that as you guys take it on the road, that I can get you guys back on here again and prom start promoting that and just keep on talking about you guys and the, you know, more you know future performances you guys have to come. Absolutely. We can we can actually do a podcast from every city that we we go to. Justin, how about that? <laughs> not, it's not hard as at all. And definitely uh, getting you guys out there. Well, Christina, Terry, uh, Nikhil, thank you guys for your time. I appreciate uh, talking with you guys and I look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, uh, and good luck. April 7th, April uh, 8th. Love's not enough. Tickets are available. Get them now. Community Arts Center, Fairfield, Ohio. All Thank right. you so much, Justin. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Take care. You guys take care. Have a great one. You too. Thank Have you. a good one, everyone. Bye. Right. Bye. All righty. That was uh, Christina Flowers, Nikkel Chapel, and Terry Chapel. Love's Not Enough, um, April 7th, April 8th at uh, 7 p.m. And at 3 p.m., uh, get your tickets now.